Hey everybody, I'm Sam. And I'm Will. And, and we, we are Working Title. Double Dunk. Guys, we're back from Mob Psycho. It's obviously the finale of season one today, episode 12. Mob and Reagan, a giant. Mob and Reagan, a giant. Suchinoko su- 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 appears. What is that? We don't know. But it's giant, La- and it appears. <laughs> Last on, Reagan tried to save the day. He was master manipulator for all of five minutes, got some kids out, and all of Division 7 just tried to kill us. Mob might snap, Reagan might be dead. It's the season finale. Seven gang. Seven gang. So make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed your time with us up to this point. We love you. We'll see you in today's reaction. Punch it. Bam. That was cool. The sword guy is cool fighting. Uh, yeah. You know, turkey. No. <gasps> All right. <laughs> scared again. You forgot. <laughs> I wasn't even scared the first time. I got scared the second time. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh my god, that does not look good, bro. <laughs> that does not look good. Ugh. But I want to hurt you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh. Hey, we learned about uh, self-defense in this season, this arc. There's a time for everything. Leave it to master. What? Bro, what is his ability? There has to be something. Wait, what? I thought that he was saying that it was plastic, but it's actually strong. What the? I don't get it. What is happening? <laughs> okay. There's gotta what, be what the more hell to is it. happening? <laughs> he just blows that. Dude, stop pranking me. I have no. <laughs> this show is doing so well at making me so damn confused, man. Is okay, Mob just doing it behind him? No, he's gotta be actually a, an Esper. We just didn't know. 3D imagery. <laughs> Dude, he's actually the goat. Wow. If he manages to just, like, stop this... Mob is not doing anything. Okay, so this isn't Reagan. What? So is that like a normal thing? So that's why he keeps him around, maybe? What? Whoa. 1,000? <laughs> what the hell? 
So that's how he survived. He like took all of his energy. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's so he's known that. He was the one who did the thing with the vases and the cons. The, when he did the little exorcist thing. Damn. Oh my god. I am impressed right now. One ton punch. Wow, Holy wow, shit. wow. <laughs> wow. Two ton guillotine. We got some WWE moves up in this thing. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Bro, I am... That is so cool. That was not a... That was not on my bingo card. No. Bro, I was gonna happen no, this episode. No, 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 no. Inconceivable. I am Reagan 1000. <laughs> <laughs> Get choke slam. Oh my god. Ooh. Let's go figure out who it is. <laughs> Damn. He sounds super familiar. I meant to say that a couple episodes ago. He sounds like Reiner. I think that's Reiner. Yeah, I think that's Reiner. It does sound like Reiner. I wouldn't have even known until you said yeah. that. <laughs> Is it familiar? That's Reiner. At an orphanage, and I curse the world. <laughs> <laughs> I totally oh understand. That's like something straight Ew. out of Monty Python. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah. Look at his hunchbacked ass. <laughs> That's actually your fault. What the? What are you even talking about? It's crazy. <laughs> That's mine now. Goofy ass. <laughs> Dude, he's he is destroying these guys' lives. Look at him. Look at him, like, teaching all these people. <laughs> He's helping them grow up. <laughs> He's turning the villains into standard adults. <laughs> you have to live in reality is good. And I'm still just a commoner. <laughs> Damn. Chop roast. Oh, dude, he is breaking their <laughs> worldview. Look at them. <laughs> they are shattered. <sighs> this is really, uh, our post talk really aged like fine wine after yeah. this episode. <laughs> ah! No! I thought, I thought it was going to be a girl from high school. I thought it was a girl. I reject it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like really sad, actually. Right. Wow, these, the God complex is crazy. Yeah, I know, Mob's actually kind of a loser. <laughs> Guys, weird. I'm out of gas. You're oh, also no. done now. Oh, no. Bad timing. Ew. Oh, thank God that kid's still around. This kid is such a third partier. Whoa. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Bro, what is... That kid is insane. It's Dimple. Oh 
marshmallow. If it's not dimple. <laughs> <laughs> There they go, all five of them in one scene. Finale, love it. Yes. Oh, he can see him now. Oh, right. It's probably because he's had that, like, ability touch him. That's good to know. Man. Oh, that's the half hour. Gosh, well, we're barely left with anything. We're, we've done a little bit of growing up. Now we have the next grade to go into, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe talk to I mean, a girl. This, this whole first season's only been like a couple weeks. <laughs> Feels like, like not even one week. <laughs> oh, is this the, the jerk? Yeah. Oh, wow, he actually looks kind of normal. He actually got some sleep, maybe. A little bit. He's still got the bags under his ass. Oh, wow. Cool. Well, good. I was kind of depressed that even though you were a bully, you got, like, slaughtered by people. <laughs> I'm very glad to see him alive, too. Well and happy. Damn, did everybody learn a lesson over the season? <laughs> <laughs> White tea poison. Fight! Oh, fight. I can I can oh. get behind that the, the this trio the, that group just talking right there. Mob so just far behind working out. <laughs> yeah, this is just him getting big. <laughs> but he he's dead. He went to failure. I like it. We're doing uh, physical training at high school and psychic training elsewhere. Everybody's improving. Body and mind improvement club is what we need to call it. But you're still talking to him right now. <laughs> Dimple. Why do I have to help you? It's funny. <laughs> Make him the receptionist. <laughs> I would love that. He doesn't even understand why he thought he was trash. Oh my gosh. Let me fix it, Nissan. Where? <laughs> yeah, whatever. You're not lame. Big bosses. Weird. All oh, right, the big thing that appears, Will. Yeah. Looks like a dinosaur. What is it? <laughs> bro, what the Pick hell? Up, bro. Looks What's like a UK kid. <laughs> <laughs> Going hunting, then. <gasps> Whoa. Ew. It's like a na nasty giant slug. <laughs> you idiot, they're not real. Oh, There it is! Bro. 
They left behind all that money. <laughs> Dimple. All right. That wraps season one of Mob Psycho. Wow. Yeah, it kind of flew. Ugh. Yeah. Um, very strong finale. Very, very strong finale, especially the first half was very, very strong. That first, like, opening sequence was maybe one of the best parts of the season. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to want to take another guess at Arataka just because he has evaded our guesses the entire season. Yeah. Um, that I'm almost like, do I even try? Like, is what they said even accurate at this point? Because even after all we saw and everything they told us, they still ended us on that scene with Dimple on him at the end when they're trying to be like, so you are a psychic now, right? And he's like, no. I don't know if I believe you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like at this point, I don't. I don't even know what to feel. But I, I had to say that opening was great. I've been conned. It's you know, it's nice to be conned in these shows. Uh, I've been conned a couple times recently with some like surprises. The JJK big reveal in episode ten. Um, JoJo is just kind of jarring as a show in general, so it's kind of just funny. But that this was like like really. Yeah, came from my field. That was good. I liked it. Yeah. So, if I have this right, because Arataka gave supporting words, it put him in a proper mood set where he was able to, like, relinquish his... I, th I think the way... Yeah, it's like he... Because of the words and the physical contact, it, like, relinquished Mob's mental responsibility to fight back. And so because it was like, leave it to Master, he like transferred his energy. But it was, they even like showed that like bridge separation. Is that like mob when he's t like normal mob, like kind of not interacting with people. And then because of the compliment that bridge opens up and he can like be a net positive that just charges up everybody like a bunny, I, energized bunny. Yeah, I guess so. I think it might be part, partly like, Partially the statement, but also the physical contact. Because hmm. remember, he was like touching him, like shoulder, like face, shoulder, like "Hey man, listen." So, I guess that's how that worked. Um, well, then we need Ritsu and Taruki and Arataka to also uh, start showing him physical affirmation. Yeah, we can have an Avengers level team. Well, like, hmm. yeah. it is. Um, <clears throat> sorry, it is like a it is a give and take. So. Mob because well it, it was weird because Mob was at a hundred and then the hundred transferred to Reagan and it became a thousand. You know what I mean? So maybe it's like Eritaka's one thousand equals Mob's one hundred. Like yeah. it's not like he's getting boosted. It's like an equivalence. It's just Mob is Mob's one hundred is still better, technically speaking, than Eritaka's one thousand. Yeah, because I would be willing to bet that Mob. <sighs> Maybe that, like, question mark level is, like, the infinite jackpot yeah. of what he can do. And no one can obtain that, which is why he's still special. But when he's at 100, maybe that's, like, Taruki 600, Ritsu 300, depending on how lov uh, how powerful they are compared to Mob. But Mob's 100 is still stronger than everybody else's 100 and above. Yeah. No, maybe. I'm not sure. Anime thing. I mean, regardless... Eritak was able to take on his power. It doesn't even seem like he realized it at first, but it completely protected him. It protected him from the slash um, of the sword. It protected him from a next slash of the sword. He was able to break it instantly. He was able to auto-exercise and nullify the multiple spirits of the the bald guy and then completely destroy like the ultimate um, ghost that the guy was, or spirit, the guy was summoning. Um, and then the gravity orbs, he was able to just smack away. Um, eventually he caught on that it was like, oh, this is Mob's powers. That's letting him do this. But yeah, now we know. Now we know that there's some type of transferability of abilities. So, I, I'd be curious as to like... 
about talking like not to jump all the way to the end of the episode, but like you were talking about with his conversation with Dimple, where it's confusing of like, well, Dimple, Dimple didn't observe what happened, so I'd be curious, like, being a spirit, what knowledge does he have of, you know, like psychic abilities? Like, clearly, he was able to, after Ritsu unlocked his, he was able to help him, like, hone his skills. And be able to use it on his own. Ritsu? What? But Eritaka does see these things. No, he doesn't. This is the first time he's ever been able to see it. He saw the Afro one in the first episode. The blue he, guy, right? The one he did the salt attack at before Mom he, even showed up. But he wasn't able to see most of them. The, I don't know. It's like sometimes he can see spirits, sometimes he can't. Yeah, you're right. He wasn't able to see Dimple originally, though. Unless he was just lying about that. Yeah, that is weird. Like, that's the thing. Dimple would not know the difference, because Dimple can see all humans. Yeah, no, but Dimple can... But Dimple and everybody could sense, like... um, Somebody... Somebody had made a comment at some point, like, oh, this guy isn't... It might have been Dimple. He was like, I can sense that he has, like, no ability. He has no psychic ability. And that's what the villain said today, too. And the villain said that as well. So... I feel like maybe there's like a difference between a spirit that's just existing versus one that, you know, like the show hasn't made a difference, so this is just me throwing out like a shot in the dark. Maybe there's a difference between a spirit just existing versus them like trying to manifest physically. Because remember, like, he, when he was walking in that tunnel in the first episode where all like the car accidents happened before like the Afro, before he encountered the Afro one, he had no idea that they were down there. Like, they were like, oh my god, there's, like, really scary evil spirits down there. And it wasn't, like, till they appeared to him that it, then Arataka was like, oh shit, there's actual spirits in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. Honestly, up up until the, the finale today, I was just going to take a guess that he has, like, a secret power called Faith. Or if he just believes hard enough, <laughs> it'll just happen. So if he really, like, and that's what I was going to say, and that's why he has, like, the confidence boost. Yeah. Because he just has to, like, really sell it. Not even to them, but to himself. Because it just won't happen. Yeah. And, like, like, the sword's plastic because he's telling himself it's plastic. <laughs> and I, I literally even believed that up until they had to explain it to me. That it was Mob giving him the power. Because yeah. I was like, I don't, otherwise, I don't know what is happening. Yeah. Yeah, but just just him being a little, like, flippant with Dimple makes me wonder. Yeah. Like, is there, is there, is there even more to be learned? Is, uh, is his psychic ability, like, a, um, like, a, uh, he steals, like, he steals power? Like, yeah. we're talking about, like, I don't, listen, I don't want to go down the whole, like, Arataka could be a villain type of thing. Not not yet, because there, there's always room to have those kind of talks, but as of right now, I feel like there's no need, but in terms of just him, like we were talking about last post-talk, um, you know, conning, like, what's the point of keeping him around? Is he just really a good dude looking out for Mob and just making him do the work? Or is it now with this? Is it like, no. does he feed off of Mob? Is there no. like, does he feed? Like it's, it's so weird. Like, is such there, a big surprise there, for the finale, too. Is there a really long con that's getting played out that we just right. don't foresee? Yet? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, now, I don't know if I'd like that, just because that would hurt me. Yeah. But it would be good storytelling. And honestly, season one did a great job at fooling me with him. <coughs> And, but, like, you have to think back at, like, the vase sequence. I brought it up during the reaction, but the vase scene with him, the, uh, like, the he was like, I got, a, I got a spirit on me, and it could it could come off on you guys and attack you. And then the whole room blew up, and he was like, did you do that, Mob? And Mob was like, no, I thought you did. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that's, like, like that. it's it's so awkward, because it's, is it coincidence? Is it luck? Is he just really playing the long game, you know, like where where are we in this aspect with him? But well, he's doing good at fooling me. I'll say that for sure. Yeah. Um, the villains got destroyed. That was definitely Reiner's voice. I like that guy too a lot. I don't know if he's coming back. The sword guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know if forehead is coming back. I don't know if creepy old man under the suit is coming back. But um, that portion of the story was nice too. I liked that. 
they just got manhandled by Eric Taco's con artistry. Yeah. And uh, persuasion, ultimately. Yeah. I just want to pull up the... It's like, I, well, like... I, it, yeah, I, no, I, you I, find I, it. No, I'm fine with you finding it. I'm so, like... You said it, and all, I just had to, like, l- turn off the show in my mind for a second, and I could just hear it purely. I, I I'd know. even put money on it at this point. I'm so confident. It was just, it's just weird, because it... I wouldn't have expected that voice. Um, trying to think of a thing to tell you guys to comment down below for the finale this time around. Oh yeah, favorite three characters, favorite three ep- favorite one episode just because it was only twelve. Uh, uh, you're right, that's Reiner. It's Reiner. Yeah. And favorite quote from the season. Okay, favorite quote, one episode, three favorite characters. Um. Just, it was yeah. Well, it was just funny because he like the, the first time he appeared on camera and he was like driving in the car. I was like, he didn't speak much, so I was like, okay. But every episode he's been in, he's like talked more and more, and I was like, why does he sound so familiar? And then yeah, as soon as I said it, you're like, oh, that's Reiner. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I did enjoy his character. I really don't think any of those bad guys are gonna, except for the little <clears throat> kid that you know wiped the floor at the very end. I don't. I don't think all of them are coming back. So, so, Mister Third Party with the flaming hair. He, we thought he was an HQ kid whose powers were awakened, but now it seems like he's Daddy's boy to the the higher the high up. Well, I I think yeah. I mean, I think that guy is like the yeah because he said your precious precious organization or whatever. So I flippin'. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, he's being a little brat to his dad, but I do think that he is the kid that the the lackeys were talking about in the other episode of like, oh, it actually worked. <clears throat> like the you know, the uh, the the uh, psychic ability chamber, or whatever the whatever the hell they want to call it, the process that they do to activate people's the powers, awakening. it did make him yeah the psychic power awakening. It worked on him, and he's very very strong. I mean, to the point that I mean, I know the. The head honcho, gas mask old man was um, already kind of like weakened at that point, but he was going all out, and he just, you know, he sent him to the other side of the planet with no issue. He's very strong. Yeah, he's very strong. He wiped the floor with the main boss, yeah, which uh, only Mob and Arataka could do. So that puts him above two other leads, three yeah. of other leads. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see the other divisions if there are any others. I would like to see. I'm going to call it the Psychic Improvement Club. Do better in the future. Mr. Roblox, his brother, a little flame torch finger guy, Elvis Presley, and yeah. the not the girl from high school. Girl. Or middle school, yeah. Clairvoyance girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, now now we have what we're working towards. Everybody's trying to get a little better. Tarek, you got a haircut. Yeah. It was very good. And he's, so. he's, he's going to lead these guys to victory. Yeah. Help himself get stronger. Help them get stronger. Um, and no, what is it? Noe Gara? No, no, Oni, Onigawara. N- o- okay, Onigawara. Yeah. He'll lead the Improvement Club, the next division of Improvement Club, when the seniors graduate. Yeah. And Teruki will lead the psychics, and we'll have a bunch of strong psychics yeah. going forward. Yeah, true. I also really like that dynamic. I don't. I don't know that. I don't think they're the upperclassmen, because the brother Ritsu's younger. But I like Ritsu. I'm going to call him the mole guy, the trash guy, because he's just like a mole. Yeah. And then Onigarara. I like those three. I think that could be a little fun union. Yeah. I don't know. Something about like more than just the, the main three is always fun to me. I like when there's like multiple groups, like yeah. my hero, like crews that hang out together. Yeah. Getting them to mature, grow. It was like funny, adults. too. Like how I love how like in this finale, everybody kind of learned something. You know, right. the mole man... He matured a little bit, realized he was wrong, got his brother on his side, and went to go make amends and apologize. Odi Gawara realized that, like, it didn't really matter that those guys were trying to snitch on him for something he didn't do. Like, everybody didn't like him already as it is, so, you know, he learned that he had to be a little bit of a better person. Um, you know, Mob is a little more aware, trying to get his flirt on. <laughs> um... But yeah, good so, luck with that. Yeah, everybody, everybody knows where that's gonna happen. That ain't gonna happen. Well, what did you learn from season one? What's your, uh, what's your? I feel like we have to have our own. 
Uh, what did Resolution. we learn? What did you? What do you? What do you feel like you took away from this? What I took away from this was that <laughs> um, you can't trust adults. <laughs> <Right>. Damn it! <laughs> well, was that what you were gonna say? Yeah, I mean, that was like the big thing because the surprise at the end. Yeah. Uh, I also really like. I know the show has already done it, but I kind of forgot about it until the finale. That we kind of isolated the term "adult" because they use it very like. They they use it with like hairy uh hairy heavy usage. Like when you use it, it's like a big term of separation because all our kids are uh, all our characters are kids. Yeah. So Eritaka just used it so powerfully. It was a really weird like moment where I was like, it's like yeah. a kind of eureka. Like, is there something to be said about this for the story plot itself? Because if we can't trust adults, that's not a good sign going forward for the show. Yeah. Where one of our main characters is guided by an adult we're supposed to trust. Yeah. Just, just saying. Yeah, I mean, all the adults in the show are oblivious or right. stupid or right. manipulative or they're children that haven't grown up yet, as Ertaka had said that's earlier. That's right. Yeah. So... It was very interesting, him, like, preaching at them and, you know, giving them more of that worldview we got before where it's like, hey, like, we're all human at the end of the day. Like, some humans are just faster than the others. Some have stronger body odors. I don't know why that was, like, the second one he threw out there. But, you know, like, some of It's true. Yeah, sure. Some are smarter, some are faster, some are stronger. Some have special abilities like this. So, like, at the end of the day, we're all the same. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. It's it's funny for a con man too, like because you would. Th- I I feel like you could imagine that a con man probably would have a really big ego because they're able to get what they want whenever they want. I mean, they even said last episode he's like never lost an argument with an adult specifically. Right. Um, it was just the fact that these adults were like actually trying to dominate, like have world domination, and so like they're like it was like these guys are just like big kids. <laughs> They're just kids that never grew up. Um, but anyways, you I feel like you would imagine him having such an ego. So it's just funny that his worldview is like, I'm a regular freaking dude. Like, we're all regular. I There's nothing that. different about us. Oh, that was yeah. like so sad. He's like, you're a commoner. What does that make you? I'm a commoner. Yeah. And I defeated you. So what do you think you are? Yeah. It, it felt bad. I was like, dang, like these people have built up... Um, and I guess, like, taking on a real-life situation, you know, you think about the people, especially people that, it's, like, a normal thing in everyday life. You know, people that are good at something when they're young. The acting kid, the sports kid, the really smart kid. And it's, like, you, like, built your whole identity of who you are off of, like, this one ability or thing that you do really well. Right. And then when you get out into the real world, you realize that, A, you're not the only one that does well. And B, True. there's a, n- nine times out of ten, unless you're like a special being like Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, Michael Phelps, like unless you're like one of the, Mike Tyson, unless you're like one of these people, there are other people that are always going to be better than you. So it doesn't really amount to much. So it's like, who are you actually as a person? And at the end of the day, we're all human. So um, it's just funny that. I, I felt bad that those guys were like that because they had, like, mental breaks. I mean, the old guy. The, that guy looked like he was probably, like, 60, 70, and he's, like, having a temper tantrum like a kid who just had their toy taken away from them. He wanted to be worshipped. <laughs> and he, he was, his world was turned upside down and broken by Reagan and his con man ways. This is why Eritaka's the best, though. The goat. He is the, goat taco. the best portion of the show. Yeah, I'm trying to think as for anything else season one related. Um, you know, it's been a fun time. It's been it's been a fun show. I'm trying to think of, like we kind of share the thing that we've learned from the show. <clears throat> um, that sometimes you can find like uh, you know a special flower among others. Uh, this character of Mob. I wouldn't have expected to be as good as he was. Yeah. Uh, we've we've slightly talked about like the maybe the intent behind writing him as almost autistic in like his char- like his character's behavior, uh, or like on on a, a spectrum of special needs for sure. And I think that's I think that's definitely true. 
And I asked Caleb about it more too, and he thinks that like that, that was the intent. Now he's seen two seasons more than us. Yeah. Um, somebody brought it up in our comments as well, which is why I think I did bring it up in a post talk prior. Yeah. Uh, I I like that. I like that there. That's like, and if if not even like a a a particular form of autism that mom he's just might like be neurodivergent in some form. Right. He's yeah. just he's just at bare minimum. Even if you don't want to like stretch it to that level, he's just somebody with like. Fill in the blank, like social, a, a lacking social battery, ineptitude with social space or person to person interaction or relationships yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he, he's got he's got the, quite the basket of uh, options to pick from and choose from. But it makes it fun. It also makes him relatable because he starts at a very vulnerable place. That if anything, audiences I feel like will gravitate towards almost wanting to protect and love on yeah. um, which I think also might actually be the reason why I enjoy the ensemble cast or like the supporting cast other than Mob because all of them kind of are vehicles for exactly how I feel towards Mob yeah like Taruki, like, and they all they all express it differently. And I'm not, I'm not saying like I'm Taruki who'd want to beat up Mob. Right yeah. Now. Like what I'm saying is like when these characters found their resolve, the way that they start to then treat mob after like fixing their own character arc is exactly how i feel towards mob yeah. uh, so it's nice to have characters <clears throat> that one have good chemistry but two also like can resonate with the audience yeah and make you not only have their back but have the character that you loves back as well so that's a nice it's a nice thing as a viewer yeah um i was actually even I, we have a buddy who is like someone in our friend group who deals with autism, and he I had actually suggested the show to him, uh, and he's actually really excited about the the you know watching it and catching yeah. up. He wants to like watch our reactions and yeah. watch the stuff. Um, maybe maybe not. We'll have him as a guest appearance. Who knows? Who the hell knows what the future and, and regardless. But um, I actually and I, then I brought it up to you know our Caleb that you guys know on the show. And he was like, honestly, that'd be really fun. I think he would love the show. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, actually, like, I feel like this is yeah. really good for, like, people who might feel exactly like that. Yeah. Like, Mob is their guy. Yeah. And it's, like, and you know, it's one of those things, too, where it's, like, you know, you have the two sides of people in the world today where it's, like, representation is really awesome. And then other people, like, oh, it's so annoying. You know what I mean? Like, d depending yeah. on how it's done, like, people yeah. people feel different ways about and, and, it. And the agenda behind it, too. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's just nice to see when, like, this is something, yeah, you could point towards someone. You know, like, we don't know how the story plays out, so hopefully, hopefully the seasons go on and they end up being, like, a positive thing for someone that would be dealing All with All I've kind of said stuff. is under the... The, the guys of season, season one. one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. but you know, as long as it's something that's good, murder something. yeah, he becomes like a murderer, or like a, a criminal, and it's like, oh, never mind. Uh, but anyways, like you know, it's cool that to have a character like that that someone can relate to that can be in like a right. not a niche, but they're you know, there's not always, especially in media. It's like, how often are you watching a TV show? That has like think an autistic main character. The good doctor is the yeah, only like that's I the only about. thing I can think of where like a, a character in a show is like specifically written to be that. Um, yeah, and it's nice because, you know. uh, and even if not for the sake of diversity, for the sake of just making stories a little bit different, yeah. you know, uh, to not have the archetype of big sword go kill. Yeah. Or, or even what I thought the show was going to be, honestly, is I thought Mob was just going to be like uh, my hero. No. Which is just like kid who doesn't have something that was given everybody else and has to work hard because we we all know the underdog story. Uh, underdog stories aren't bad, um, and Mob is still technically an underdog, just in a different way. In a different way, yeah. yeah. But um, at least the journey set up is different from the start going forward. Yeah. So it's nice, and for people who watch who who watch both for fun and for uh, the content that you guys suggest to us, refreshment is nice. Yeah. So. <clears throat> that's a plus. So that basically covers our characters because yeah. that's like how we feel about all that. Yeah, story so, was good. So what are you, what were your thoughts overall on like season one? Um, you know, uh, uh, you mean just like like rating, like rating, 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 and I mean like how you're feeling. Like, I mean, of course, like we're gonna keep watching it, but you know, just overall, I think it's a solid B. 
I think it's solid B. Uh, the why you might ask, it's not A. I actually, I actually, well, when we get to the JoJo reactions, you guys will. For anyone who listens to those, I'm changing my ratings on the first season of that too, because I think everything that I've been watching recently, all the shows are all like really strong Bs, yeah. rather than like complete A's or S tier. Yeah. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's uh, actually a good thing. That's where I want most of my shows to land, where it's just like I'm, I'm getting exactly what I want, if not more than I expected. Yeah. Uh, and then the reasons it's not like at a 90 to 100 is like specific personal choices, like aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, what I would want more of from it being like... Because kids, in my mind, perfect score is like I got everything I wanted and more, and I'm surprised that I got it all. Yeah. Like Mob Psycho... There's, there's, it's because it's Mob's in season one, and all the stuff I think I'm going to be getting, it will be like season two, season three stuff, yeah. is further development with, uh, you know, our characters, Mob and Ritsu. This is such groundwork stuff, that's why it's really solid and it's good, so I'm going to go with B. It's, uh, it's, it, it did a really great job, yeah. and I, I've enjoyed my time with it. Nice. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd lean to like a B, a B plus. I think that where the show excels. I think, like, the latter half of the season, like, kind of when we get into, like, Ritsu's story, it was when the show really, like, picked up for me. Um, Same. Where, you know, kind it just kind of becomes a more, like, um, I feel like I've said this, like, three times in, in the past, like, two reactions, but, like, not that it's, like, diverse, but it's more of a a diversified story. Like, there's just more to it than, like, we're just following one character just being, like, having his high school struggles. You know what I mean? Like, there was just a little more complexity as to, like, what was going on and and it, how different characters, like, their issues they're dealing with, which is, like, it was one of those things where, like, I necessarily wasn't expecting in season one for us to get, like, three to four characters and have, like, complex understandings of, like, where they're coming from in life. Like, the issues they're dealing with, how they're trying to deal with it, what is happening to them personally. So, like, you know, sometimes depending on the type of show, like, just knowing the, like, genre that Mob Psycho falls under, I really, if that was going to happen, I was, like, waiting, like, okay, that'll be, like, a a season two where it's, like, 20 episodes, not, like, a 12-episode season one. But it was nice that we got that in the latter half of season one, um, but the first part was, the intro was cool, I just thought, like, the first episodes were a little dull, I would guess I would right. say, like, right. I, they, I feel like that's, like, the best way I could describe them, um, and it's more so just because Mob initially, because there's just no, there's almost no context as to, like, who he is and why he's this way, and, like, it's, it's definitely different for a main character that we've experienced in any other show we've watched before. So, it was just like a, almost like an adjustment period, but also because there wasn't as much going on in the story. It's like, okay, this is kind of like a little slow and boring for me right now. But I I still think it's like a B, B plus, like somewhere in that range. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, There was definitely an adjustment for me too. Like, I had to like figure out how I felt about everything. Yeah, and there was definitely like highlights. Like, yeah, Arataka in those first two episodes, he was awesome. Dimple's introduction was really cool. I liked Dimple post- him getting exercise, like him becoming this dimple, like little little ghosty ghost. But like the, his that whole like cult thing and the you know the milk drinking and you know it's just like I was like what are what are we doing? Like what's happening right now? You know, um, I yeah, actually like it got too bizarre too quick. Yeah, and there was like no. Sometimes when shows are just so like out go, like outgoing way too fast, and I'm like I'm not like not acclimated. Yeah, I just like sometimes going into shows <clears throat> and having no prep or like. Sometimes I just, like, need to know. Because yeah. that's that's the thing, too, I think, with, like, just for, like, understanding reaction channels. Like, sometimes we just don't jump into these things, and this is not the stuff we've ever watched prior. Yeah. Like, I've never watched anything like Mob uh, up until at least we began the channel with anime stuff. Yeah. Like, and even, like, getting into anime initially was such, a, like, a hard thing and it, to, like, put myself into. Because yeah. it was so different from what I've consumed up until that point. Yeah. And, um, like, even, uh... Even I grew to like the art style. I didn't really like it initially because it kind of gave me the like 
American dad, like, you know, U.S., like, Western sitcom vibes, like, with some of, like, the interactions with the characters and, like, the ugly faces they would do, and even, like, these, like, random, like, not cutaway scenes, but these, like, random, like, really intense, detailed, like, funny, like, they did one in that, this episode today with, um... Adult Swim type of stuff. Yeah, with, uh, the, the sword guy, Reiner, and... Our taco and they had the really sketch detailed faces like what do you mean and he was like I felt the same way whatever um, so the like I the, I feel like in the latter half of the season they chilled out on doing those as much like the first six episodes it was like I mean I remember there was one it was either the reaction to episode three or four there was a moment where you and I were like dude what the hell is happening in this right now well, like there was just like so many like random like quick bits that were being thrown out I was like. like Dude, I, I feel like I'm getting, like, disconnected. I'm losing the plot right now. The show feels like it was trying to, like, bring in, like... <laughs> the memers. <laughs> no, no, like, <laughs> like, people who, like, trip out <coughs> and to, like, mentally heal them by the end of season one. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, just come and watch this for all the funny and, like, jokes and trippy visuals. And then turns out, like, it helps, like, self-navigate you to yeah. a piece. <laughs> yeah. Um, piece of being a commoner. Yeah. But I th- I do, like, th- so there was that. Like, th- that was kind of, like, a hard thing for me to get over. Like, they're funny, but I don't know how much I like them. But I think the, the way the action sequences were animated and, like, the way the psychic powers and their auras look, I think that's all, like, stellar. I love that. When it got heartfelt is when I fell in love with it. When it that started to get... I think the, that's why the brother... Por- Honestly, the it, brother all, it all story. changed when Taruki changed for me yeah <clears throat> so episode five when taruki like started to have his like <sighs> yeah m- like his like ethereal moment his uh, like resolve yeah or i feel like that's when i was changed. like okay so the show has some depth to it yeah we have some we have some layers to work off of and that's when you know you start to impeel it and you discover it's more than what it was yeah um i think i think you're right topical on on the for the uncut gang will uh said uh, we might do a 2023 top top listings of these shows. I feel like that'll help me a lot because we watch so many shows and I'll give out a rating and then like another show will happen and I'm like, I gave the same rating but I'm like, this show is not as good as the other yeah. show. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, sometimes like that and that's why too for me like and even with our OP reactions, like they're always so, they're horrible because we always give such shit takes in those because for me it's like like my relationship with art whether it be music videos movies tv shows whatever it's always like a growing relationship with me i never really have like a good feel on something my first listen my first watch through it's usually like sitting on it re-watching it or it's either like listening to it or watching it a couple times or just having a time to like watch it and then really think about what I had seen to give like a fair take so that would be something that's cool so if you guys want to see something like that like the end of the year recap of what we've watched and where we're sitting at it now like it could be like a hey best of these are our favorite things from the year and then also like we could just revisit every single series and be like hey so like how are you feeling about Jojo season one and two because that we would have finished that how did you feel about the last of us and kind of give like a 60 second quick breakdown of stuff and then have maybe like a longer dissertation about the things we really loved for the year i feel like that would be something that would be good for us but anyways if you would like that you think that's a cool idea comment down below um leave a like all those type of things um do you um did you want to do like favorite character favorite episode favorite Um, characters favorite episodes I feel yeah, like the characters yeah. things we might have also already like said like a hundred times at this point. So True. Uh, I think it's really just like hard to place one over the other. Yeah, it's really hard actually. Yeah, like I like I like the main five. Yeah, and I don't know if I'd place them. I think at this point I'd only place them based off who's been given the most screen time yeah. or appropriate time to develop. So that would probably be the two brothers and Arataka. Yeah, and then the other two underneath. Because yeah. even though I love Dimple and Teruki... They're not in it that much. One's only had like a two-episode arc, and the other <laughs> one's been a sidelined joke. Yeah. That both have potential. So... Yeah. That's where I, I think I'll settle with the two way. brothers, yeah. and 
um, Air Taka and just say, you pick where they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Favorite episode, though? I think... I think it's really tough. Um, can we do two, at least? It's been, like, a sure. 12 episode do, do a favorite and then an honorable mention that could take some Okay. Place. I think my favorite... Probably where the story turned is that episode five, Turuki. um, Turuki's episode where, you know, it was great action, great animation, great, you know, it was a fun little story of like the gang war that was initiated and, um, you know, getting to see like someone's life change because of who Mob is was also really cool. And it was nice to see the, the depths that the show would go and not being as like surface level as expected. And then honorable yeah. mention, um... It's hard for I can't decide whether this episode or last episode. You know, I'll I'll tell you to do this finale as it's honorable mention. Yeah, because, I'll do the honorable mention because this one. the finale will be my favorite, and then my honorable mention will be episode five. Just so gotcha. it's back and forth. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, just to jump off episode five yeah. appreciation. It's also the episode where Mob like became more of a character. It's like where yeah. he started to express his own feelings and returning it back at Taruki. Because yeah. everything he was saying about Taruki was exactly basically how Mob can be maybe analyzed as well. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we got to like we got to see there was something like beneath the like blank exterior that he has. And it had that crazy moment with the, the devil mob. Yeah. It really st- kind of still scares me to this day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Same. Um, finale it's purely because of Eritaka coming in for the win. I uh, loved that moment. Um, it was very, like, we just watched the episode 9 recap, and you understand why. Yeah. The post talk, and you basically explains everything we've already talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. We read the show and everything else. Yeah. So any last things on season 1 before we wrap? Season two's around the corner. Any predictions? I have no idea. I will say the one, th- my last thing about season 1, I was surprised. I think the show kind of, like, threw me for a loop of, like, what to... Like, initially, I wasn't really sure what to expect. And the story's, like, not that different and crazy compared to other stuff we've seen. Um, but the way the story played out in the beginning, I was like, oh, maybe this is going to be, like, a kid's high school journey. And then they introduce like, bad guys into the world and, you know, yeah. like, evil espers. And then, you know, Arataka's, like, whole... Like, in the show going deeper than I expected it to, this show, like, kind of threw me through a loop. I wasn't really expecting what we got. So it makes me excited. Where does season two come to play? What happens in that? What to expect? I have no clue. <laughs> I have no idea. But I just hope we add on to everything we already have now. I, I Yeah. I co-signed to everything you said. I really wasn't expecting much from uh, no. Mob Psycho. Me neither. Yeah. Uh, and to, to not to even depress anyone, we had a lot of bangers on our, uh, our poll and a lot of ones that I wanted to see. Mob and One Punch Man were obviously like more well-known and Mob cleared the plate and I was like damn another formula yeah. anime i was like shit <laughs> yeah. but 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 you know it once again all the sam haters out there uh here i am converted um i am i am i am, I am a new man <laughs> what's the ragnar quote oh i have changed i have changed <laughs> <laughs> i have changed and for the better um because mob has been good uh, I did not expect the 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 conversations to be deeper than I would have gathered. Yeah, I, I feel like these are one of, out of all the shows we watch on the more serious side, despite all things, which is really funny. Um, yeah. So that's good news for season two. Hopefully, hopefully. If it, listen, if the show can at least maintain what season one was and do even better, it will be one of the better animes we've watched. Yeah. Um. So. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. You know the whole kit and caboodle. Comment down below the things we asked for. And for now, we'll catch you in season two. <laughs> Punch it. Boom. Boom.